Hello everyone, Elite Cameraman here, and guys, this is not a drill. We actually got a new episode after nine days of waiting, and it's one of the craziest episodes yet. It had the most secrets, Easter eggs, and additions to the lore of any episode yet. It seems like we actually might have a traitor inside the Alliance, which is crazy to think about, but we should have seen this coming. With this new episode, the changes that happened on episode 67 full version actually does make more sense, and we also might know when the next episode or part might be coming out, but we'll get into all that later in the video, so make sure to watch until the end. There is actually so much to talk about in this episode, it's insane. Everything from the Skibidi factory, the Walter White appearance, what's Secret Agent's goal, and a lot more. But before we start the analysis, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to pay your respects to the large cameraman who gave his life for the Alliance. Let's try to get to 100,000 likes for his sake. Rest in peace, brother. You were the best POV cameraman we've ever had, and thanks to you we were able to watch the return of Titan TV Man. May the cameraman gods rest your soul. Anyways, here we go. This episode starts with a speaker man hitting a toilet with his spiky bat, while another speaker man is literally chilling on the left cleaning his knife. And no, it totally does not look sus, and I totally do not clean my knife with a TV woman picture next to me. This speaker man most likely stabbed the dead toilet on the left and right after. The camera zooms out and we see the dark speaker man walking menacingly as usual, while our beloved large cameraman literally breaks a toilet's neck with one move. This scene also has other details which we have to talk about. If we freeze the frame and zoom into the right side, we see a poster with the Skibidi Alliance logo on it, but it's actually branded in a different way with the canyons behind it. You might be asking why I'm showing you this, and the reason is, we can actually see a writing on the left top and we can barely read the whole word. This was clearly put there for a reason because this poster is most likely fully custom made, and the word fits the frame just barely. It says appliance, but it's actually missing one P in the word. This could be a mistake, or could have been done knowingly to fit it in the frame. The missing P aside, those canyons clearly looks like the outside of the Skibidi bunker, and it having both the logo and the word appliance makes me think that this place is where the toilets store everything and get upgraded. This was also proved later in the video with the factory we saw, but we'll get to that later in the video. While the POV cameraman is turning left, we see that most of the cameraman are chilling and don't seem that scared of this situation, and right when we turn fully left, we see that we are actually in the POV of Plunger Cameraman, and it really has been a minute since this happened. In my last video where I talked about the last leak, I actually mentioned that we could be in the POV of Plunger Cameraman, and I guess I was right. We haven't really seen Plunger Cameraman using his true skills in this episode, and this kind of leads me to think that we might actually get a part 3 once again with the Plunger Cameraman POV next time as well. Who knows, maybe it'll be a five-part episode for the first time. There is also the fact that we are most likely not going to skip any time between today's episode and the next, because it ended in a cliffhanger once again. This episode was one of those episodes I actually enjoyed quite a lot because of how it went deep in the lore and added on to it. We also have gotten a small confirmation from Defouque about the next episode. At least that's what we think. Right after he posted this episode, he decided to post it on Instagram. It's still the same post, but in the description there is a Russian word, and if we translate the word, it actually says one week. This most likely means that we'll be getting the new episode in just a week, which is good to hear because this episode almost took 10 days, and I have seen some people disappointed about the episode just because it took 10 days. Bruh, do you have any idea how much effort it takes to make these videos for Defouk? Just because it took longer to make and you had to wait 10 days for it doesn't make it a bad episode. This literally was the first episode where we got to see stuff that added on to the lore and actually had real Easter eggs in a long while. Also, everyone needs to understand that this is a part two of an episode, so it technically is not the full episode, and I'm assuming that we might get a part three or even more, as I said, so once we see the full episode in one go, it'll probably make more sense. After Plunger Cameraman takes his plunger out of the toilet, we see another bunker door in front of us and a cameraman going to the keypad thingy on the right side. We really do zoom into the Skibidi Alliance logo a lot, and there is something weird about this place because why is this logo covered with blood? The door we'll see later in the video also had the same thing and this is why I think it's extra weird. I see two possibilities here. First one is the boring one. 
There is a possibility that one of the toilets went crazy and was roaming around causing chaos across the laboratory, and Skibidi toilets had to stop him by force, causing the logo to get blood on it. But if that was the case, why isn't there any blood on the rest of the door? And why is the same mark on the other door as well? I think this blood was spilled there intentionally. There is a possibility that the hate towards G-Man toilet is ramping up, because don't forget we also saw one of the Astro Toilets in Episode 68 Part 1, and the UFO Toilet was literally watching the G-Man Toilet clones die from the shadows. This clearly shows us that they are around the area, and they actually might have control over the lab. We don't know the details yet, but if they are trying to overtake G-Man Toilet and banish him, it would make sense to dirty his name by spilling blood on every door with the logo, because this logo clearly represents the toilets as if G-Man Toilet is the leader. What happens after this scene is the real shocker, and it actually goes in so deep. Plunger Cameraman looks to his right, and we see the normal cameraman thinking about how we could open the door. But the brown shirt cameraman comes in and says one second with his hands. After this, he gets some type of device out of his pocket and uses it on the screen. It weirdly sends out a green beam and hacks the system, leading the door to open. But before that, we can see the normal cameraman asking for the device or asking what it is with his hands, but the brown shirt cameraman just ignores it for some reason. Weirdly, this is not going to be the last time he does this. It actually goes much deeper than that, because I didn't realize this before, but if we go back to episode 67, part 4, we'll actually see something weird. If you start watching from the second, where the POV cameraman starts chasing after the tiny scientist toilet, we see that there is no one other than the large speaker man trying to run inside. But once we turn our head inside, we see many cameraman and speaker man running inside, other than just one. And for some reason, it's the brown shirt cameraman standing next to the security screen that is also glowing green. Even though we see everyone else having momentum and running inside, he looks like he was already inside there before and actually used the device to close the door because from what we can see, he is able to unlock these doors however he wants, and he 100% could have saved our beloved injured large speaker man. The Chad himself died because of this guy. If you guys have watched my last video, you would know that Dafuk wrote, not everyone is on your side, and this leak shows a scene that we'll see a little later in the video, and if you look carefully, we can see the brown shirt cameraman all the way in the back looking down. But that's not all. And it goes even deeper, which is crazy. Because the people who have watched my episode 67 full episode changes analysis video would know that there was a very big change. And I think now we know the reason behind this. In the normal version of episode 67 part 1, the first time we see the secret agent there is only him standing inside the green glow. But Dafuk decided to change this in the full version of the episode most likely to give us a clue about what's going on. And it all makes sense now, because with the new changes, there was actually two people standing in the green glow, and there is a very likely chance that this other person is the brown shirt cameraman, because his silhouette matches 100%. They both have a long coat, and it makes sense that the brown cameraman got this hacking device from the secret agent. And let me remind you that the secret agent was the one who told the POV cameraman to look to his left and follow the scientist toilet in episode 67, part 4. I have no idea what the secret agent is cooking up and what his grand plan is, but it sure is something crazy. I don't think people realize how big of a problem this is because he probably is not necessarily helping the Alliance. He is just using them depending on his needs. And until now, we have seen him watch over Plunger Cameraman many, many times. And if I'm honest, I do have a bad feeling about the next couple episodes because of this. We already know that Plunger Cameraman is a little hurt after episode 67 and now this. What if the secret agent was making sure that Plunger Cameraman would eventually get inside the bunker? And what if he needs him to do something where Plunger Cameraman needs to sacrifice himself for secret agent's own goals? It's all a possibility and I'm really hyped for it. But the only thing I don't understand is why the brown shirt cameraman is helping him. Is he under mind control? Is he being manipulated? Is he actually a traitor or is he simply just doing it for the sake of it? These are all questions that I think we'll get the answers to before we leave the Skibidi Toilet Laboratory. Also, it's now confirmed that this place is a laboratory because of the description of the video, even though it looked more like a factory in the next couple scenes. We'll most likely get to see the lab sections next. While the door is opening up, the normal cameraman gives a thumbs up, and since they have no idea what's awaiting them, 
Dark Speaker Man gets into his attack position instantly, and we basically see a very long hallway with three toilets that look like normal scientist toilets. When I say normal scientist toilets, I mean it in a way like scientist cameraman. We saw that the squad killed many of them at the beginning of the episode, but it's much clearer to see their capabilities if we freeze the frame right when the door opens up. It's clear that they have four claw arms and two normal arms with actual hands. We see them all having glasses, kind of representing them being scientists. But the more important thing is the baldy toilet on the left with the shiny bald head. Yes, I had to say it twice. He has something which looks like a phone at first glance, but it's actually a clipboard. It's really not important what it is because this shows us that they can use their hands as if they are actually human. I think this might be foreshadowing the upcoming advancements the toilets are most likely going to get. They probably are going to start becoming more human-shaped like the Alliance over time. Maybe mutant toilets they have created were trials for these. Or they also may even be working to try and create a Titan-like toilet to go against the Titans, because we've seen time after time that no matter which toilet it is, they can't go against the Titans. But what if their Titan toilets actually had arms and legs to protect himself and actually use for extra strength? I'm not sure if this will become true, but it's a real possibility. The second the door opens up, we see the scientist toilets go into shocked face mode, and it doesn't last long until they all die because we see the dark speaker man literally dashing in with his jetpack and the plunger cameraman throws his plunger onto the baldy's face and jumps over to simply flush him. Right before he flushes the baldy toilet, if we freeze the frame and zoom into the back, we can see the speaker man is still beating a toilet with his bat next to the Skibidi poster. And we see another goofy scene seconds later while Plunger Cameraman is turning to his left. We can see the speaker man putting his knife inside the toilet's heads, but he really doesn't look like he wants to. He literally slowly pushes it in. But I think we can understand why, because blood just cleaned it off at the beginning of the video. Right after we see the dark speaker man kill the last toilet standing, we turn back to the hallway just to see the brown shirt cameraman using the weird device once again to hack the door. In this frame, we can see a piece of paper with the number 8 written on an electric box on our left side. I don't know if this matters, but this episode had many stuff that was put intentionally to the walls, so I wanted to mention it. And once again, after the door opens, Plunger Cameraman points to the brown shirt cameraman, but he just ignores it until they are interrupted by a sound and a machine getting a container from the hallway. Plunger Cameraman instantly starts running towards it. He first tries to see what's going on by peeking through the corner, and we see a construction toilet flying with gray toilets back to back, rolling through a conveyor belt while yapping about random stuff. Plunger Cameraman slowly sneaks to the door to see more, and the scene we see is truly horrifying. If we freeze the frame right here, there is already too much stuff going on. We can see two engineer-like toilets literally assembling the gray toilets with their acid upgrades, and it looks like they are trying to get an army of acid toilets. There is a likely chance that the toilets are planning on mass attacking the Alliance with the acids because they know that it's the one thing that actually counters every single Alliance member right now. After this moment, the scientists at the Alliance bases better start making a new material that can protect everyone against acid. We also see a long corridor on the bottom as well with rooms and you know damn well who we are going to see there in a moment if you have watched the episode. After checking out the inside, we turn to the large cameraman, and he actually makes a sign to go inside and attack, but Plunger Cameraman says no. The real question comes in right at this moment. If he said no, why the hell did he poke his head out literally seconds later? Right after his no, his screen suddenly starts glitching with green, and for the first time ever we see the words transmission error and recording error on the right top while the screen is still glitching. This probably also means that the Alliance agents outside probably got very stressed when the transmission cut and it came back to actual chaos. This will most likely lead them to enter the bunker as well. But that's not the important thing because right after the glitch plunger cameraman pokes his head out and starts looking at the corner of the room which is glowing green in blips. After seeing the green glow he suddenly turns behind and looks at the large cameraman very weirdly by zooming into him and also zooming into the other three agents at the back, just to suddenly turn back to normal when he looks back with the green glitch. And we also see one last green glow from the corner right before the glitch happens for the last time. I would like to say this was the weirdest thing that happened in today's episode, but it really wasn't. 
But we have to talk about what happened here because I don't think the plunger cameraman was conscious while poking his head out. I think the secret agent took control over plunger cameraman for a second and made him poke out to see what was happening at the corner. There is a possibility that he was maybe stealing some files or doing something wherever the green glow is coming from, and he may have wanted to check if any toilets were looking at him or noticing him, because the way Plunger Cameraman looked back at the agents was very weird, and he looked as if he had no idea who was with him or to see what's going on behind him. Whatever the secret agent is cooking up, it better be worth it because he is the reason why all the Sigma Large Alliance members are dying at this point. The second plunger goes back to normal. The whole factory's lights turn red and all alarms start going off, alerting the toilets of an intrusion. And the next scene was one of the scenes I laughed so hard because we get noticed by fricking Walter White and Jesse from Breaking Bad. I really do wonder what they have been cooking up. Maybe they are the reason behind the red eyes some toilets have, who knows? We see some chemicals on their hands and it looks like their toilets are yellow. But the real question here is the toilet behind the window. Why is he looking like as if he has seen a ghost? His reaction does not seem normal at all to me. He does have the same reaction as the scientist looking toilets we saw earlier in the video. But why would he be scared when he is totally safe? Suddenly one of the mechanic toilets appears in front of us while all the other toilets are also looking at us as if we are disgusting and our hero large cameraman shoots one of the chemicals on the ceiling to distract them and it actually works. Plunger cameraman suddenly turns right and we see the brown shirt cameraman using his green laser once again to close off the door, but in this scene there is actually a huge Easter egg. Most of you already might have noticed this, but it's the writing on the wall. You might ask what this writing is, and it's actually something really cool and something we've already talked about. If you write the letters minus G-Z-S-B-O-Y-D-W-T-Q right after a link that starts with youtube.com slash watch question mark v equals you'll actually be directed to an unlisted video on defuk's channel and it's actually the godzilla versus upgraded titan tv man leak we talked about a couple days ago it wasn't confirmed that if defuk made this troll leak or not back then but because of how high quality it was we thought it was his video and it turned out to be true he apparently uploaded this eight days ago and called it godzilla get humbled and gives copium to Godzilla fans at the end who thinks that Godzilla can beat upgraded Titan TV Man. Right after this, all the agents start running towards the door we opened before coming to check out the end of the hallway, but right when the large cameraman is trying to escape, one of the mechanic toilets throws his chainsaw right into his shoulder causing a very big damage. Thankfully, the large cameraman shoots his rocket to knock the mechanic toilet back when he falls down. We also can see that the blood on the logo is also apparent in this door as well. I really don't think this is a design choice by the toilets and something else because every other normal logo we saw has been clean, unlike the ones on the doors. And the blood is only on the logo and not the entire door. Right when we are trying to run to the door, another crazy looking toilet with dual lasers show up out of nowhere at the end of the hallway. And before his lasers can get to us, the plunger cameraman jumps inside the elevator and on the wall while he is jumping. It actually says four. This might mean that we are on the fourth floor right now, and we might have a long journey in front of us going down to floor one, unless we just skip to floor one instantly at the end. But all that aside, what happens next is one of the saddest moments in the series. While our beloved large cameraman was trying to get inside the elevator, he gets shot by four incredibly powerful lasers at the same time and gets knocked off, even though he makes it inside and the other agents succeed in deflecting this toilet with receding hairline. Sadly, he doesn't have much time left. Plunger cameraman goes next to this Chad like being who protected us all for all he has got and served the Alliance as best as he can. And this incredible soldier still even at his last seconds thinks about his mates and gives his lens protector to plunger cameraman. He does this while burning alive and our hero gives his last thumbs up right before he dies off. Do not forget to pay your respects to this incredible cameraman. He really was the best of us. We see all the cameraman mourning for him and standing still, but everyone needs to snap out of it because of what's to come. The elevator keeps going down until it stops, and when the doors open, we see a much darker corridor with red lights all over the place. And it doesn't seem like these are alarms because they are not really beeping and the episode ends right here. I'll talk more about stuff I might have missed and what might happen in the next episode tomorrow, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to Not Miss Anything 
Elite Cameraman out.